So today we will see how the prepay invoicing and settlement feature works in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation. The prepay invoicing and settlement has a life cycle. Uh, it starts from uh, purchase order and from purchase order you can define a prepay definition and uh, by the definition I mean that you can define a value or percentage based definition of a prepay and this prepay uh, cannot exceed the total amount of purchase order so it means if there is US dollars 1000 uh, total amount of purchase order so prepay definition also will have only 1000 US dollars in its definition uh, either percentage or fixed value so based upon um, upon the confirmation of purchase or uh, you can also post a prepay invoice and it can be partial or full and later on a payment channel is used to settle this prepay invoice once this prepay invoice is paid and later on a final invoice is uh, submitted by the vendor so this final invoice can be knocked off with the paid prepay invoice so we will see how how this works we will need to define a prepay category for this purpose and this category will also be defined in prepay posting profile which is inventory in the inventory module so first of all we need to have a prepay category we will move to procurement and sourcing module so first of all go to the procurement and sourcing module here we can go to the procurement categories so in the pre uh, we can edit this category and we need to define a category for prepay prepay uh, we'll click new category node So here we will define prepay We will also input a friendly name prepay similar similar name once it is defined We'll close the form and then we'll move to uh, inventory module and uh, in the inventory module we'll move to the setup of uh, posting and then posting so it will show us the posting profile which is defined in the inventory module in this posting profile we'll move to the purchasing tab purchase tab purchase order tab and then in the purchase order tab uh, we need to move to prepay prepayment group in this group we we'll need to create a new entry so in the item code uh, we need to choose category and then in the category we need to choose the newly defined category for the prepay so it should be visible here it is we'll select this one and then we need to now define uh, the mapping to a ledger account so we'll choose for the sake of uh, simplicity here prepaid other expenses so this is a balance sheet type of account uh, and this is used as a temporary or a control account to keep track how much prepaid is already paid to the vendor. So we'll choose this account and we'll save it. Once we have saved it, now we need to make a demo. Uh, so we'll go to the accounts payable. We need to create a purchase order.
So inside purchase order, we will choose any any of the item which we need to buy from a vendor. And uh, once that item is defined, so based upon the total amount of purchase order, we need to also define a prepay definition inside the purchase order. So once this is defined and the PO is confirmed, then we can move on to the prepay invoicing uh, step. The prepay invoice uh, will show on a single line with the quantity of one and the category of prepay which we just have defined. So it will not show any of uh, inventory item or anything else from purchase order rather than from prepay definition, the category already defined in prepay definition, the category will populate in the prepay invoice line. So it will be category based line and quantity will always be one. So a prepay for example, can be partial or it can be a full amount. So here we'll create a new purchase order. So we will select a vendor. So in this case, we'll choose the SCME office supplies. 1001 the code is and then okay the next is you can define any of the warehouse here actually we need to define any warehouse where we will be receiving the material sometime it is a quarantine warehouse also uh, so the date we will keep it as uh, uh, 10th of November this is the today's date ok we will press ok so it will create a purchase order header and then in the line we will need to choose any inventory item So it's showing us a uh, blank line, we will choose any item here. So first item we will choose Surface Pro 128GB. So this item is now selected and the quant with the quantity of 1 and the unit price is 899 US dollars. Net amount is also 899. So let me check other tabs. Okay, now once this item is defined, we can uh, check how much is the total amount from the total form So it's showing 899 uh, US dollars. So just press OK and close this one and go to the purchase fast step. And in purchase fast step, we need to locate the group of prepay. Here we can uh, define a prepay payment definition. Okay, so we'll uh, give it a, a description. Prepay. And here you can see it is fixed or percent. By uh, fixed means it, it can be a fixed value or percent means it can be percentage. So we will put here percentage of 100. And same field will be used for percent or fixed. So you can see here the limit automatically is populated from PO total amount. So it says 899 can be limit. Prepayment remaining means it can be a partial prepay invoice. You can uh, post it multiple times until it is reached with this total amount of $899.
So for the sake of simplicity, we will only post full. And here prepay category, uh, we can choose the similar category which we have defined already. Uh, here, which is prepay. Okay, and then we'll save it. Once it is saved, we need to confirm this purchase order. So once it is confirmed, then we'll proceed with the uh, to the first step of invoice, and then we'll. Uh, Post the prepay invoice, and uh, there, there we can observe how this category, which we have defined in prepayment group uh, or definition, it is automatically populated in that invoice. So we'll just proceed once this is confirmed. So as operation is now complete. Uh, we will move to the invoice tab and here you can locate that in the generate group uh, there is a final invoice button and then perform invoice which is a draft invoice and then prepayment invoice we will just press this prepayment invoice option so it will open the invoice posting form where we can uh, observe various values and finalize it we need to give it a number once we have given a number and we have checked or all the only single line will be there because it is a prepay invoice so so here it, it is invoice posting form and in the invoice identification we need to give a number okay so we are expecting a prepay invoice also from vendor side so he will submit an advance uh, invoice and we will put that number here in the date here we can see it is 899 uh, and the category is prepay and quantity is 1 this quantity always will be 1 and the category will be defaulted from prepay definition itself so we can put also the invoice date here and uh, description also we can put invoice we will just number it something different because it's saying which is already used okay so so that's it and we will check the totals So it's showing us 899 amount. So we will just post it. We will just post it and uh, So this prepay uh, with the number prepay 0123 is already posted now and uh, we can check it uh, from the journal as well. What entries it has made. So this is the voucher number prepay. Triple P and uh, here we can also 
check the voucher how the entries is gone so there are no entries is shown we'll catch it from gl itself so the voucher number is this one it's not showing here yeah it is showing here now and uh, it's saying that uh, accounts payable others is credited with 899 and prepaid other expenses it is debited with 899 uh, which is our temporary account which we have already defined in the posting profile so that's it for the invoicing now we'll pay this invoice which is prepay invoice now we'll go to accounts payable and uh, we'll move to vendor payment journal So it will open the payment journal itself and uh, in the payment journal the posted prepay invoice uh, we have to select that one and uh, it will automatically default the amount you can uh, name here prepay payment we can move to the lines So the date we need to keep as it is and in the accounts we will choose the same vendor and then uh, once we have chosen the vendor then we need to move to settle transactions form it will show all open transactions. against this vendor here is our invoice so we we'll choose this invoice and uh, this showing us 899 uh, amount US dollars so 899 is in the debit means payable will be debited and bank will be credited we need to generate the payment because this is this is of type check okay, so we generate the payment Once this payment is generated, we will need to pause the payment journal. And when the payment journal is posted, so the prepay invoice will be settled and knocked off. Then we will need to create a. Then we will need to check also prepay definition uh, for the application amount, how much it is showing there. And then we will move to the final invoice posting. And we'll we'll check how this paid prepayment will be settled against the final invoice from the vendor.
so we can see here payment status is sent with the check number so we will just post this payment journal So it is showing us the operation is completed. So uh, we will check the voucher. Voucher is simple. The bank is uh, credited, and uh, accounts payable other which was previously at the time of prepay invoicing it was credited, so it is debited now. So liability created and then liability knocked off with this pay, uh, payment journal. So we will close this one because we are we are done now with the payment journal thing, and uh, we will just close it. Once closed, we will again move to account payable to the purchase order. Date we will put and, uh, this is our purchase order. So in the purchase order we will move to the purchase fast step. In the purchase fast step we can again see our prepay definition. Uh, here we, I can uh, one thing need to be explained that is prepay remaining is zero before it was 899 because we have invoiced completely so it was it is now showing zero prepay application remaining uh, until the payment journal is posted is zero once payment journal is posted so this the same amount which is knocked off against the prepay invoice will be showing here so it is it is showing that in this purchase order we have this much amount to apply to the final invoice so once we have applied it will become zero so just cancel it okay so now we'll move to final invoice thing we'll go to invoice uh, posting form so the only difference will be here that in case of prepay cycle we don't have to create another payment journal for the for the final invoice from the vendor so it is also showing us one or more pending invoices have an applied paid prepayment invoices available to apply use apply prepayment form to apply prepayment values to the selected invoice so first of all we'll see 899 and this is the same uh, line which we have created in purchase order so this is a consumable item and surface pro 128 gb as it was defined so we just have to give a number to this invoice this will be in fact an actual number but for the sake of demonstration we are putting some sample So this is the final vendor invoice. So at the top you can see apply prepayment option is quite visible here. 
so we will select this option it will show us a screen which is called application of prepayment screen and uh, here you can see select prepayments to apply here the amount also can be changed amount to apply for example if i put 500 so remaining will still be there and uh, that can be also knocked off with the payment general or something like this for the sake of simplicity i will put the full amount and i will press the button apply prepayment so there is something missing here Is accepting now 899 US dollars. I will press the button apply prepayment. Once I have applied, it should have created one in a, one extra line, uh, which is again with the procurement category of prepay and quantity will always be one. And uh, 899 US dollars amount is less now it's because it is now applied, so there should be no liability. So that's it and uh, now we will move to the header. Match status uh, not performed, we will update match status here. This is passed on and we will check the totals. Totals should be zero. So here it is, invoice amount is zero. And subtotal is 899. So I'll press OK and then I will just call this one. Once this uh, final invoice is posted, we will check uh, the entries, the voucher entries. Uh, against this purchase order, there will be two uh, journals posted. One was prepay invoice journal and the other one is final invoice or vendor invoice journal. And uh, the entries of uh, prepay uh, invoice we have already seen that it has created, uh, I mean, it has cr credited the liability, vendor liability or accounts payable liability and it has debited the temporary or control account of prepay which is kind of a balance sheet. Both are actually balance sheet accounts. So the final invoice is now posted and we can move on to the general part. And the prepay uh, journal we have already seen. So this one is the final invoice journal and here we can see the entries so what it has done uh, you can check vendor balance is debited and vendor balance is credited so net effect will be zero here and uh, for the vendor balance I mean, and the other one is cost of purchase material invoiced is debited here and prepay application is credited here. So the amount, uh, so the account of prepay, uh, which is control account, which we have defined in posting profile, it was earlier on at the time of prepay invoice posting, it was debited, but right now it is credited. So it means now net effect will be zero and there is no more of prepay to apply to any of final invoice or vendor invoice so that is already knocked off and the cost of purchase material invoice is now debited so this is the final thing
so that's all for now and i hope you have enjoyed the video if you have enjoyed the video or you want to comment about anything just uh, post your comment in the below, below section thank you very much for your time